Today, 15 things every reefer should know about the science on why we use RODI for saltwater aquariums. And what we wish somebody had told us day one. Starting with the direct answer, what's safe for us to drink as humans is actually not safe and poison for the fish and coral. Decades of reefers have come to the same conclusion, just use an RODI filter. All right, number two, the primary reason that we use RODI water is because almost no reefer has any clue what's actually in their water. Do you know? <laughs> you know, I have one time actually tested, not tested, but I actually went and I went and I found the, the water source and I printed it out and I looked over it and I still couldn't like make any headway into what those numbers actually meant. So yeah. I've tried. It's Greek to me, you know, right? If you look at it, not only would most people uh, not know where to look or what the levels of safe anything is, they don't even know which items to look for, yeah. right? So uh, in that case, this is the reason why we're using RODI water in almost every case is because almost nobody knows what's in their water and what the safe level would even be, but we're going to give you a little bit of insight into that today. All right, number three, I bet most of you have never thought about this, but what's the DKH of your tap water? You know, we actually did some tests around this area and one of our water sources had DKH as high as 26. Okay, you know what it actually was? It was 26 when it was mixed with salt. So, really? Yeah, it was like 20 Whoa. DKH tap water here, and then we mixed it with 7 DKH salt, and it became 26. Can you imagine adding that to your tank? I mean, if you did like a 50% water change, and you thought like, oh, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be nine DKH, all of a sudden your corals look terrible the next day? Okay, so some of them were 10. We tested five different wow. locations around the Minneapolis area, all from different water sources. Some of them were 10, some of them were 20, some of them were like in the teens. Yeah. Uh, I was shocked because when you think about what we're removing from it, you're thinking like, oh man, it's chlorine and ammonia Absolutely. and you know toxins and poisons, man. But anything at the right level is actually a poison. Oh yeah. Most people would say 26 DKH. <laughs> Once I mix that fresh water yeah. with my salt water. That's poisonous. That is poisonous. So one of the biggest reasons is actually something you think is desirable with calcium alkalinity, but really it's elevating those levels so high that it'd be toxic to our fish. Number four, there's another common toxin in the water. What is it? It is ammonia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so locally here, we looks, the highest that we tested was 0 0.77 parts per million. To just to give you a reference of why that matters, gill damage starts about 0 0.05, which is way, 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 way Dude, lower that's, than that's that. That's crazy high. Okay, you know where the ammonia comes from? Uh, I'm guessing something with that's added to the water source, chlorine, something like that? Chloramines. Chloramines. Yes, they mix chlorine and ammonia together to make sure that that disinfectant yeah. gets way down, but it actually splits up eventually, carbon breaks it up and everything. Uh, so it is very, very common to see ammonia, probably more than 50% of municipal water supplies yeah. has high levels of ammonia in there. Uh, and we don't want to put that into our top off water no. and we don't want to put it into our freshly mixed salt water because nobody wants to dose ammonia to the <laughs> tank. Not only bad for the gills, but we're dosing nutrients to the tank no. as well. So uh, avoid uh, ammonia is one of the biggest causes of or reasons to use RODI as well. All right, number five, another one. This one people know, but they may not know how high it is. Yeah, it can be crazy. Again, we did like five water tests of, of local Minneapolis water. And some of it we tested was crazy high in phosphates. I think we got up to what, 1.8 parts per million in one of our water sources. Yeah, many people's goal is actually 0 0.03. So to have 1.8 oh, yeah. parts per million in the actual water source is insane high. I mean, this could be to the point where you're doing a water change and you're actually increasing how say, much phosphate you have. I would say almost every case, I would hope anyway, that if you did a water change with water that starts at 1.8 parts per million uh, phosphate, you're actually elevating. Oh, you're, yeah. you're worsening the water with your water change. You know, and one thing we haven't mentioned yet, which is important, you could test two different homes on the same water source and they could both be different because your plumbing system could be completely different. So don't just trust what your local water source says. Every single household could be totally different. I actually found out uh, where I live that uh, we use Minneapolis water uh, yeah. for part of the year anyway. Uh, and I'm like, well, why is it so much dirtier than Minneapolis water? Why would... It's because it's farther away from the river. Oh. And so all, you know, all these Pump plumbing in the ground is like 100 years old. Oh, wow. uh, and so it's got so it's much garbage further. in it. So if it goes twice as far, it picks twice as much garbage yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, phosphate, this is a really common one. Uh, in many cases, phosphate may not be so high. It's a really uh, major deal. But in our case, on all the tests where we tested around Minneapolis area, 
It was really bad. And when I say Minneapolis area, we were testing like well water, groundwater, river water. Yeah. We were looking intentionally for different sources, but this is one of the reasons. You don't want to inhibit the calcification of your corals no. and you don't want to feed uh, all kinds of algae and pests. So don't dose that with your fresh water by mixing <laughs> it into your salt water or auto top off. Absolutely. Number six, it's actually really common for nitrate to be in the water. Again, out of those sources we tested, the highest we got was 5.4 parts per million. I mean, that is also like mind boggling. Like if I had, uh, you know, uh, what, zero nitrate in my tank because I was yep. doing good and then I did a water change, yep. uh, like a 50% water change, I would actually increase it to yep. two and a half. You yeah. Know? Uh, so yeah, nitrate, another one, like not overtly toxic in many cases, but you're going to feed all kinds of algae and problems. Like you want to be thinking, I'm going to make the water better, not worse. Yeah. So why start with five parts per million? Nitrate? Because that means every single time you change the water or auto top off, you're adding nitrates into your tank. It's bad enough we're adding nitrate <laughs> uh, or nitrogen anyway with food every single yes. day. Do I have to add it with my auto top off no. too? No. Another reason why RODI. Number seven, every municipal water supply uses some sort of disinfectant like chlorine, which actually burns the gills. The highest we locally tested was three parts per million and 0 0.1 is lethal to most fish. So that's way more. Yeah, we use the chlorine so that we all don't get the black plague. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's also really bad if you're wondering why uh, it's bad to uh, gills. Uh, expose it to your lungs by sniffing some ammonia. Oh, You'll gosh. realize exactly why that's a terrible idea. Oh. Uh, yeah, so the uh, ammonia actually burns the gills at really, really, really low levels, uh, and that's why we remove it. The carbon blocks are going to do that mostly mm -hmm. in these cases. Uh, and it can also be, this is one of those one things where, you know, they have dechlorinator yes, you, you can, know, put can in. use. Uh, but if we're going to solve all the rest yeah. that we've already been talking about, uh, this is just an add-on of the most toxic stuff that we can remove using an RODI system. Cool. Number eight, we also sent in some ICP and water quality testing. I even had some done in my own house mm. uh, for my own drinking water mm. purposes. And uh, almost all of them had arsenic, copper, lithium, silicon, uranium, and other contaminants. Uranium kind of sticks out there. I right? can't believe there's uranium in your water. Yeah, you know, the reason for that is it's groundwater. And in Minnesota, we have radia, uh, radon. Right? Oh, yeah. Which is decaying, you know, radioactive material in the earth, right? Nice. That stuff goes into your water. Now, how toxic any of that stuff is uh, goes to the point that we made earlier is nobody knows. Nobody knows what no. the safe level of uh, uh, copper, uranium, lithium, silicon, and whatever. Uh, maybe copper, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but uh, any of those things are for fish and coral. We barely even know what they are for human beings. Uh, the only thing that most of us would know is let's remove them all. And that's what your RODI system is going to do. Number nine, it's actually really hard to test for certain things like pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, and other chemical pollutants that actually make it into our rivers and groundwater. So even if we have ICP tests, there's a lot of things that could be missing. Yeah, so there's so much like garbage that can get into the water from yeah. the ground, depending on where you live and where they're pulling that water source from. And the reality is none of these test kits or even the city water reports or anything are going to cover them all. They're going to cover the ones that the EPA said, you cannot be yeah. above this or you're going to kill people. Uh, and so uh, we really don't really know. And again, that's why we strip it all out. Yeah. And then we add it back in with our salt mixes to create a high quality artificial seawater mix that doesn't have any of these issues. I think some people might say, well, you know, if it's okay for us, it's probably going to be okay for the fish. But the thing is, first of all, we're very different creatures. And second of all, adding this stuff in, it can really build up in your tank over time. So what might be a minimal amount could, could multiply over time and get toxic. Okay, so there's also the difference there between what's okay for me to drink a couple glasses yes. of a day. Do I want to uh, be submerged in it, you know, chlorine <laughs> right. for you know forever? Also, you know what? Human beings have organs like livers uh, and uh, kidneys designed to remove yes. uh, pollutants. Corals don't have those things. It just builds up in their tissues until they uh, becomes toxic yeah. and then they kick the bucket. So just because it's safe for humans does not make it okay for coral and fish. All right, number 10, the sediment filter and the science of how that works. Basically, it's just a filter that's going to pull out all the dirt and sediment so that we don't foul all of the other filters that come after it. 
Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly simple, but incredibly important to make this system work as well and as long as it possibly can. In fact, this is probably the most important filter oh, yeah. to maintain on the whole thing because what it does is it gets dirty and clogged and then pressure drops mm -hmm. and pressure is the thing that the entire system works yep. off of. So this couple dollar filter, if you maintain it properly, will actually improve the performance of the entire thing. Yeah. Number 11, carbon removes most of the chemicals. And they're not 100% efficient, and that's why we usually use two of them. I mean, that one's a tough pill to swallow because everybody yeah. thinks everything's 100% efficient. But the reality is these carbon blocks do a really great job of pulling out some of those pesticides and other chemicals that make it into the water, splitting up the uh, disinfectant, breaking down the chlorine and chloramines but they are not 100% efficient, meaning that some of them out there, like some of the most popular ones in the world are actually rated for depletion when you should replace them when they allow 50% of the pollutants 50%. Through. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, so I say much. too much. Yeah. Uh, and so that is why we run dual ones. Most of ours are rated for about 15% uh, breakthrough. And so that's why you have two. So if one's removing 80% and the other one then removes 80% of that 20. one, we're getting down to really, really low levels that the rest of the filters can deal with as well. That is why in most cases, we're always gonna recommend at least a five-stage system that has these yeah. redundant filters, specifically if you're producing anything more than a handful of gallons of water at a time. All right, number 12, the most nondescript filter in the whole thing, but it's actually the workhorse. The thing that does almost all of uh, the actual filtration on this system. The rest of it's just getting ready for this. What does it do? It's the membrane. Oh, the membrane. All right, tell me a little more. Okay, so the membrane uh, is a complex thing, but it basically uses pressure. The easiest way to probably understand it is that it uses pressure to push through the clean water molecules, which are really small, through the membrane's pores, only allowing pure water through, and the rest of it's too big, it doesn't make it through and just flushes away down the wastewater line. A little more complex than that than reality, but that is probably the easiest way to understand so it. So basically the water after it leaves here is pretty clean already. Mm -hmm. And there's just a little bit more work to do here, right? Yeah, this thing, if you had like uh, 100 TDS water, it should actually come out like two, yeah. right? So almost all of it has been removed at that point. All right, number 13, you were getting at this a second ago. DI resin, that's what mm -hmm. we're talking about. This bad boy right here, this will remove anything that's able to sneak through all of this that has an electrical charge to it. Yeah, like I said, some of the things actually do make it through, goes from 100 TDS to two or 500 yeah. TDS down to 10. Uh, what does sneak it through, way through, will be removed by the DI resin in a vast majority of cases, because most of these things will have an electrical charge and bind themselves to the DI resin, uh, be it's either the negative or positive charge. This is how we're going to get to zero TDS mm -hmm. water get it down to pure lab quality water that we can mix with our artificial sea mix uh, to make uh, salt water for our tanks. All right, number 14. If you didn't listen to anything else we just said, Matthew has one takeaway above all else you'd like you to hear. It is possible for you to use tap water, but it's in a small percentage of the cases. If you're willing to research your water source, send away for ICP tests, then there is a chance that you could use your tap water. But what you have to remember is an ICP test doesn't tell you everything that is in that water. So to be completely safe, use an RODI filter. All right, so I feel like that answer is the correct one, right? But it also feels like hedging our bets. It is. Be because the reality is, is nobody knows what's in their water. Very few people know what to look for. Uh, and so the answer is yes, there's lots and lots of people out there that use tap water, specifically tap water used with like dechlorinator and other stuff mm -hmm. like that, that have been successful. But how would you know if you're going to be one of them? It's just hard to say. And number 15, Ryan's number one takeaway. What is it? Uh, for me, it's that the water will never be cleaner than what you start with. That's for water changes, for freshwater auto top offs, and toxins accumulate into poisons over time. So the biggest problem with not knowing what's in the water is a lot of it isn't going to be poison day one. Yeah. It's when I add a little bit of copper every single day from my system uh, into the auto top offs, what's going to happen over the course of the next year. And when it happens in a year, I will never, ever, ever attribute it to this thing that I've been doing safely for a year. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, so the water will never be cleaner than what you start with. Start with something fresh. Learn something unexpected about RODI. There's more in our RODI Did You Know playlist right here. New episodes like this one released every Monday and Friday.